Hello, welcome. And I'm just going to take a quick moment to check my email if anyone has last minute, where's the link questions uh -huh. for me. So. And while Alicia does that, I just wanted to chat with everyone real quick. Um, I don't know um, if you got a sense of this from Alicia, but this is not your typical webinar. You know, one of those things where you watch someone's PowerPoint for an hour. This is going to be super interactive. So I want to kick things off on the right tone while Alicia gets everything set up logistically. I want you to come to the chat and I want you to tell me where you got your start before coming to Gladstone. So maybe you were already in the Bay Area. Maybe you were in New York City or Mumbai or Shanghai. Give me a taste of where in the world you're coming from, just so I can get a sense of all the diverse pathways that have led to Gladstone. So come on to the chat. That's going to be our primary method for going back and forth here. And I would love to hear from Antara, from Cecilia, from Daniel. Don't be shy. Just let me know right in the chat where you're coming from. Okay, we've got Gloria from Chicago and LA. Wow, very cool, Gloria. Um, let's hear from other folks. We've got um, uh, Chitrita from New Delhi, amazing. Um, Katarzyna from Poland, LA, um, Genentech, Paris, Seattle, India, then Boston. Oh my goodness. We've got the whole world covered here from Orlando to Brazil and beyond. That is fantastic. Okay, super excited about that. Now tell me what you're excited about in terms of your future. You know, you just gave me a taste of your past. If you were to close your eyes and imagine walking out of Gladstone into a career that you love, give me one or two words that describe that. Maybe it's the specific field, the domain, the location. Tell me in the chat what's getting you excited right now. I'm going to try to tailor the session to the things that you're passionate about. So it could be everything from nanotechnology to AI and biology or whatever it is. Let me know right in the chat. And I would love to hear from Antara, from um, Deepankar, from Ellen. Don't be shy. Come right to the chat. Give me a little flavor of what motivates you. Okay, we've got oncology. Oh, my goodness. Um, Amarabas, my uh, uncle, is an oncologist. And he always says an oncology is the study of life and death itself. There could be nothing more important. So I love the fact that you're pursuing that. Katarzyna says stopping inflammation. Wow. Getting even to the root causes here. Rafaela says neuroscience. Antara says neurodegenerative therapies, improving the life of patients. Wendy, this is fantastic. Well, I have to tell you all, this is a very welcome relief. I do a lot of these sessions for business students. And not that business students don't have important career goals. You know, they want to work on sustainability and education. But clearly, you guys are invested in making a really important mark out there in the world and in people's lives. So I love that. Now, one last question. If you had to rate your skills on LinkedIn today on a scale of 1 to 10, 1 being, which one is LinkedIn again, Jeremy? Is that the blue one? And 10 being, move over, Jeremy. I could teach this workshop in my sleep. Give me your LinkedIn self-evaluation right in the chat right now. And there's no shame with being high or low. Wherever you are is where you are. Now, Katarzyna says one, Savannah says sev seven, Deepankar says three exclamation mark, Tori says one exclamation mark, yes, and that's totally fine. We're going to get you all the way to the top of the scale by the end of the session, but if I had to do a little armchair data science, I would say we're looking at like maybe a mean of 4.5, median of five, so I think we're actually at the perfect place to begin, Alicia. We've got a lot of folks with a lot of passion, a lot of hunger, let's take them where they want to go to make the world a better place. So if, so if it's good with you, Alicia, let's get this party started. Okay. Go right ahead, thank you. And as you can see, this session is being recorded because that's always the number one webinar question. You'll get a copy of that, you'll get a copy of my slides, all the links we cover, but I'm giving you all those copies because I want you to experience this in the moment and really make the most of the session. And the first way that I want you to do that is to give some love to your amazing career guru, Alicia herself. Because as you know, Alicia is working super hard to support your success. So send her some emojis, maybe do some AI poetry, some odes or sonnets. Shower Alicia with love because she's sending all that love right back to you. Now, a little bit about your speaker today. I am coming to you having had this super lucky career. I've had a chance to be everything from a kindergarten teacher to a tech worker. I currently lead the marketing team at Khan Academy. But the one place that changed my career even more than all these great organizations was getting a chance to work at LinkedIn. And that's for the simple reason that as soon as I arrived at LinkedIn's headquarters, I could see there were all these algorithms, all these sort of insider secrets that control our destiny as job seekers, but we never get to hear about them until now. 
because I'm going to be sharing those insider secrets with you, like I've been sharing with top grad students, top postdocs around the world to help you land jobs that you love. And all I ask in return is sort of an adherence to three core principles. And the first one is I don't want you to get caught up in all of this market thing. One of the things that Alicia told me is that obviously there are some postdocs out there at Gladstone who are looking at the headlines and seeing layoffs and downturns. And you're starting to wonder, am I going into an economy that's just terrible? Well, here's the reality. Even no matter how the economy is doing at a macro level, at a micro level, there is always opportunity if you understand how hiring works. And so what I'm going to take you through today is a step-by-step -step guide of what's happening inside every organization, every cool company, every startup, so you understand how it works. And most importantly, you can reverse engineer it. You can take all these techniques right to the place where there's maximum opportunity, and that, of course, is LinkedIn, and you can use these tools to land the jobs that you're excited about. So I'm going to walk you through the steps one by one, and then I'm going to show you how to nail them for your own benefit as you launch the next stage of your career. And all I ask in return is three simple favors. You're going to get some pop quizzes that I would love for you to answer in the chat. I would especially love for you to volunteer for live role plays because I'm actually going to sweeten the deal. I used to give out a copy of my Chat GPT for Careers book, but I've got a better incentive today. For anyone who's selected for a live role play, I will personally review your LinkedIn profile afterwards and give you specific line by line feedback to make sure it's awesome inside the algorithm. So stay tuned for that. And then, third and finally, whether you want to volunteer or not, no worries. All I ask is that you take everything on my screen and you do it on your screen. That way you burn these techniques into your muscle memory. And long after my annoying voice fades from your ears, you can always call upon these things whenever you need them. So with that said, time for the first pop quiz. There is a lot of really interesting data about there, out there about what current recruiters are dealing with. So the average recruiter, according to the largest HR organization in the world, is juggling 25 jobs that they're trying to fill at once and each job attracts 250 resumes on average. How do they possibly manage? Is it A, the miracle of caffeine, B, the miracle of technology, or C, the miracle of those magical talent elves that come out of the bookcases at night and review all the resumes for them? So A, B, or C, come to the chat right now. What is helping recruiters get through this massive mountain of applications? I know this is a funny one to begin with, but Deepankar, Shalini, Chatitra, everyone's saying B. Deepankar, if you had to guess, and feel free to unmute your line, what do you think uh, recruiters are using behind the scenes in terms of technology to help them get through these resumes? And feel free to uh, uh, unmute Deepankar and just let us know. Yeah, uh, it said that it was disabled for some reason. Uh, I think there is the resume screening software with machine learning that people use, I forget the name, ATS or like something like that. Exactly. Applicant tracking system. You nailed it, Deepankar. And if you were to look inside any organization, whether it's academia, whether it's a corporation, whether it's a startup, whether it's a governmental agency, I guarantee you they have an ATS. And the way that these applicant tracking systems work is not rocket science. I probably wouldn't even call it machine learning, to be honest. It is pure pattern matching. So as an example, if I was looking at this ATS right here, and I saw that I had 625 applications for a role, plus I have 24 other roles that I have to look through next, I'm not going to read every last resume. I'm going to immediately filter for match score. In other words, of all these resumes, of all these profiles, who matches the job description, who actually is worthy of having their resume read. And so with that in mind, the first big hack that I want to teach you about is not applying with a one-size-fits-all resume, just hoping for the best, but instead becoming a job hacker, someone who gets to understand what's happening behind the scenes and leverages those insights to get found in the most important ways. So if you want a free LinkedIn profile makeover right here on the spot, just be the first Gladstone Institute postdoc or grad student to raise your hand and you'll get this free makeover as well as all of your most important keywords to maximize your match score. So who's going to be the first volunteer today? Just raise your hand or chat in, I'm in. Whomever goes first gets that opportunity. And today it's going to be Deepankar. So Deepankar, feel free to unmute. Turn on your webcam if you like and come join us for yourself and the benefit of every Gladstone community member. Welcome Deepankar.
All right, Deepankar, feel free to unmute there. Yeah, and everyone, uh, shower Deepankar yes, with love. There he is. Hello, hello. How are is you doing today? Hey, doing good. Uh, That's great. And so, but I can't see. Oh yeah, I can oh, see myself okay. now. <laughs> there we go. There we go. I know there's always that sort of moment of panic on Zoom where it's like, am I broadcasting? Can people see me? Yeah. But you're coming through loud and clear. Okay, Deepankar, tell me this. Perfect. When you yeah. close your eyes and you imagine yeah. the next stage of your career post Gladstone. What does that look yeah. like to you? Uh, I think at least for me, out of the lab. <laughs> out of the lab, okay. And that's exactly what Alicia was saying. So many people are just like, get me out of that lab, get me into something else. Now, yeah. obviously there's a whole big world out there and you don't have to have your exact passion boiled down 100%. But if you had a hypothesis about the kind of job that would make you super happy, mm -hmm. what is that job? I think working closer, more closer to patients than what I'm working with currently. Mm. That my work has a direct impact on people's lives because I, I work in that. early, uh, early drug development, and that seems like it's too far off from impacting patients. Yeah, and so maybe you're not sure of the exact job title. No, which is going to make it hard for us to find the exact job description. Yeah. Well, let me show you a bonus hack, because I think a lot of mm -hmm. students are probably still at the stage or postdocs are still at the stage where you say, I know what I want value wise. I just don't know how to put it into the language of work, the way that recruiters mm -hmm. think about it. So what you can do in those situations is you could come to ChatGPT and you could say, I'm a Gladstone Institute. Are you a postdoc, Deepankar? Yeah, I'm a postdoc at Genentech. OK, oh, OK. Genentech, um, I know that I want to get out of the lab. Is this and... really going to be helpful asking ChatGPT? Yeah, and so this is the really cool <laughs> stuff. Watch this and get closer okay. to patients. Now, tell me anything else that you want to really focus on. Are there certain domains, certain verticals that are especially pertinent to you? Yeah, you just totally uh, oncology want to is my yeah. expertise, so uh, I want to stick to that. I don't want to switch. Beautiful, okay. And obviously you could put in anything else, you know, specific yeah. skills, specific passions. Uh -huh. But for yeah. now, what if you just say, what are 10 specific job titles Titles. that match my background and interests? And the beautiful thing about this is that if you were just looking on LinkedIn or just looking on Google, it feels like this ocean of job titles. Yeah. And the beauty of ChatGPT is it can boil that ocean a little down and make it more manageable. Aha, uh -huh. clinical research associate, medical science liaison. I have heard about the second one, yeah. Yeah, and absolutely. The third one as well, yeah. Good, good, okay, good. Yeah. Okay, and so now we have just crossed that sort of um, that fine line between the world of students and, and uh, postdocs where everything is academic into the world of industry, into the world of recruiters and the way they see things. So now, mm -hmm. Deepankar, as we look at this list together, and obviously there's a long list of things you could do. Yeah. Are there one or two job titles here that intrigue you? I think the first three. The first three, okay. Yep. So let's, let's start with maybe clinical trial manager. Yeah. And let's say that we wanted to find a job in that space that felt really good. So we'll look for clinical trial manager job. And then we're going to pull up some of these opportunities right here. So here's an opportunity at Gilead. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And I know this may not be the exact perfect role, but, but I, I want to use it as a demonstration. But it's a good exercise. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. And everyone should try this, by the way. Don't just sit there in awe of Deepankar, as amazing as he is, follow in his footsteps. When you see him do stuff, try it yourself. Now, Deepankar, if we wanted to figure out what the most important keywords are in this job description and to make sure that they're in your resume and your LinkedIn profile mm -hmm. so that you have a really high match score right yeah. here inside the ATS, yeah. how could we do that? How can we figure out whether there's a really good fit between the job description and what mm -hmm. you're bringing to the table? Yeah. Based on what I just saw, my instinct would be to say chat GPT, but I'm I'm trying to learn and not rely on chat GPT as much. So maybe I would go through this and then at least here, it seems like clinical trials might be a really good keyword. And then like the words like clinical research, medical affairs, this sort of stuff. Yeah. So let me actually show you a couple of different ways to do it. Because you're right. Sure. Chat GPT can be great. But just to make it a little more structured, I want to show you a tool called JobScan. Okay. The reason I like JobScan so much um, is that it will give you a little bit of a sense of what it feels like to be a recruiter. So that idea of the match score, that idea of the comparison, this is gonna simulate that for you 
to give you a flavor of what it's like inside. So what we're going to do is we're going to grab this entire job description, top to bottom, and we're going to paste it right in to the job scan tool. And that way we're going to get a sense of, okay, here's what the recruiter wants. Here are the keywords that matter to them. And then Deepankar, do you mind if I pull up your LinkedIn profile, not to criticize it, but to shower it with love? Is that okay with you? Okay, beautiful. So here we go. We're going to pull up Deepankar's profile. And again, everyone, you got to root on your classmate, your fellow colleague here, because Deepankar is being so kind by letting us learn from his experience. And he's going to make you so much smarter in your own experience as well. So here's Deepankar's profile. And similar to his resume, it's got his skills, his experiences, his publication, all this good stuff. And we come back to job scan. Now, Deepankar, you're muted. So just unmute for one second. Do yep. you mind if we reveal your moment of truth, your yeah, match score ahead. inside the system? Yeah. Okay. 2%. <laughs> <laughs> if, well, if we were all together sitting at Gladstone, <laughs> I would have everyone bang on their tables, do a little drum roll. Because we are virtual, yeah. let's do a digital drum roll. So everyone, come to the chat, put in your favorite drum emoji, marching drum, bongo drum, and we're going to count down from five. Here we go. Five, four, three, two, one. Here is the Pankar's match rate. And again, just like we talked about, this is the same score that yeah. every ATS in the system uses mm. to decide if you're a good fit. Now, when you see that you have a low match rate, I know that's depressing, but here's the great news you have the ability to change that score in the next hour. How does that mm -hmm. sound, Dipankar? Sounds great. Check this out. What these tools are doing is they're basically filtering out all the generic language and getting really specific about the things that matter. Clinical yeah. operations, clinical mm -hmm. trials, SOPs, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. And they're hunting for it inside your profile or inside your resume. Mm -hmm. If you've got it, your score goes up. If you don't, it goes down. Yeah. So Tell me this, Deepankar. You're getting a lot of these dreaded red X's here, mm -hmm. but I kind of have the feeling that you've done some of these things. Am, yeah. I, am I mistaken? Yeah, yeah, of course. Quite okay. a lot of these. So pick one, just pick one that you see here where you're like, I've definitely done that. I have that experience. Like study management. Beautiful. Study management. Now, let's come back so, to the source of truth. Where does this belong, Deepankar? You've got this whole profile or this whole resume. Yeah. Where should study management go? Uh, it should go in my current work, but I don't really have anything in my current work. Aha, yes. Yeah. So he, here's something interesting. You've got this amazing opportunity at Genentech, yeah. but exactly zero bullet points, zero keywords. Yeah. yeah. Now, let me ask for a little contrast here. Do you happen to have a copy of your resume on your hard drive mm -hmm. that includes more detailed bullet points? No. <laughs> no, okay, got it, <laughs> Because got it. I'm no not worries. actively looking for positions right now, so I've not been working on my resume. No worries, but That's no worries. the reason well, for taking the course, yeah. I suspect that probably some of your colleagues do have good resumes yeah. on their hard drives. Mm -hmm. But here's the interesting question. How many times every single day is that resume on your hard drive being scanned by recruiters? Not at all. Not at all. Because they would yeah. have to hack into your computer somehow, yeah. which not even the most technical recruiter I know is capable of yeah. doing. Or I on would the other apply hand, for jobs. Yeah. yeah. So when you apply, obviously they see it. But yeah. if it's just sitting there, it's not doing you a whole lot of good. No. On the other hand, tell me this, Deepankar. How many times every single day is your LinkedIn profile being scanned by recruiters? Yeah, I know. Yeah, hundreds. If, hundreds, yeah. okay. So you might say hundreds, but what if I told you the answer is 100 million? As in oh, there wow. are 100 million recruiter searches on LinkedIn yes. every single day, and mm -hmm. every recruiter search searches every last profile and every last word. Now... Where should those resume bullets be, Deepankar? Yeah, they should be right there. Exactly, exactly. And the first so, time that I learned those techniques or work on something, I should add that to my LinkedIn profile. That's right. And it's not to say that LinkedIn is more important than your resume. Yeah. Obviously, your resume has an important place. And Alicia has an awesome resume workshop coming up. Mm -hmm. But it means don't forget LinkedIn. If you've got a great resume bullet, put it online as well. That makes it easier for every recruiter to see it. So you could put in... Um, you know, research management and yeah. clinical trials and everything mm -hmm. else. Now, quick question for you, Deepankar. How many times um, do you think the algorithm wants to see these skills? Is it enough just to list it yeah. one time or all I things being equal, would it prefer multiple listings? If it says like zero out of three and zero out of two, maybe it wants them two times or zero yeah. out of one times. 
So what this is telling you is that they're listed multiple times in this one in job description. description. All right. Yeah. But now imagine that you were like an, an algorithm engineer inside LinkedIn or inside an applicant tracking system. Mm -hmm. You've got to break all these ties between these candidates who all list that skill. Yeah. Who should get the upvote? Who should go higher in the ranking? Someone who lists this one time or who lists it five times? Yeah. Seems like the one that has five times just based on arithmetic, not reading what the context is, uh, just based on numbers, probably the five times. And what's the intuition behind that? Like why, all else being equal, why would you prefer someone who listed five times? That's, it seems that they have had more experience because if they mention it five times in their resume, they have at least had five projects where they were working on that skill. That's exactly, it's a proxy for depth of expertise. If you list study management one time under skills, maybe you watched a YouTube video about it last night. If you list it under every experience, under your education, now it feels like you actually have expertise here. And so bottom line is, you definitely want to list your bullet points, but where else do you want to list these skills, Deepankar? Where else uh, do they go? Is there a skills section here yeah. as well? And I have really good news for you. Just three weeks ago, LinkedIn raised the cap on the number of skills per profile from uh -huh. 50 to 100, right. which means you have 79 blank slots right now that you could fill up immediately with all the mm -hmm. skills you already have. Yeah. And then there's another section that's completely wide open. And right now it's not even on your profile. No. It's the about <laughs> section. Yeah. And, and yeah. Have, have no shame about that. The reason that people don't know what to put on their profile section is LinkedIn doesn't tell you. It's totally vague. About what? But here is the dirty little secret straight from LinkedIn, which is that the about section gives you 2,000 characters that you can do whatever you want with, uh -huh. and they all count towards the algorithm. So yeah. here's what I want you to do, Deepankar. I yeah. want you to think about your two audiences. First audience is always the algorithm. How do mm -hmm. I get found in the first place? Yeah. So give the algorithm what it craves, a list mm -hmm. of all of your skills straight from the JD. And then at the end of the day, a human recruiter has to choose you from this list. Yeah. They're gonna choose you not just based on your skills, but based on your accomplishments and your focus, mm -hmm. do you mm -hmm. feel like a great fit for this role? So if you can give them that one-two punch of here's who I am, here's what I can do for you, you're going to be golden. And if anyone wants to use my template, copy it right out of Zoom or right off my profile and you'll be mm -hmm. ready to rock. Okay, Deepankar, you have been fabulous. And I know you're probably completely done with school and homework at this point. You've mm -hmm. been inside the ivory tower for so long, you're ready to escape. But tell me this, if I was to give you one homework assignment, Deepankar, mm -hmm. and it's going to be the most important homework you ever do, would you be open to one last little bit, one last little assignment? Yeah, absolutely. Good man. Check this out. What I want you to do for me is I want you to get credit, not for skills that you're still building, but for the skills you already have. And so mm -hmm. I'm going to take a quick screenshot of all of these keywords straight out of the job description. And then when you have a moment, and yeah. I know postdocs never have much time, but what I would love for you to do is to get credit for the things you're already amazing at and then open the door to as many opportunities as possible so you can walk right through them. Thank you so much, Deepankar. You were fabulous. Thank you, Jeremy. Beautifully done. Okay, everyone, you got to blow it up with love. Deepankar has just shared his experience, his profile, and now we can all build on the shoulders of this awesome giant. So with that said, if you've got questions about the LinkedIn profile or the algorithm that scans it, I would love for you to ask those questions now. Questions about the cover photo, the headshot, LinkedIn endorsements, recommendations, it's all fair game. Let me pause for a moment. And if you wanna ask a question by raising your hand or by chatting in, I'm just gonna wait a little second here to see what's on your mind. Okay, deepankar has got a question. Deepankar, I'm what sorry, are you gonna chime about? in again? Uh, I wanted to ask, because I, if I'm applying for, let's say, the three different roles that you just showed me, uh, do I make, I cannot make three different LinkedIn profiles, right? So how do I address that part that there are three distinct job opportunities, but I still want to have keywords relevant uh, so that I get screened through that uh, algorithm? Deepankar has just hit upon this sort of key paradox, which is, in some ways, LinkedIn is superior to a resume. It's being scanned constantly by recruiters. It's always available, but it has this one big flaw which you only get one profile versus multiple versions of your resume. And so what do you do about that? Well, the way that I would signal that optionality 
is it would bake it right into your most important section, which is your headline. So check this out, Deepankar. If I was to come in here and I was to say, hey, I've got three things I'm excited about, CRA, MSL, and CTM, I would make sure to list all those things right at the top. So I would say exploring opportunities. All right, got it, and, got it. Yeah, clinical trial management um, and um, the other ones as well. And that way, if any recruiter lands on your profile or even sees it inside their search, they will immediately know, aha, Deepankar is focused on the exact thing I'm focused on, which is filling this role. That's how you get that bat signal out there. Okay, Deepankar? Great question. Okay, let's go next to Rigney. Rigney, go for it. Hi. Yeah, I was wondering, what is your opinion on the endorsements on your LinkedIn profile? Yeah, so check this out, Rigney. Let me see if I can pull up an example here. Um, so we're going to go... Um, let's see if we can pull up an example. Well, I'm going to show you this. Check this out. So there is a separate tool that is called LinkedIn Recruiter. And what LinkedIn Recruiter does is it gives LinkedIn, um, uh, people who are using LinkedIn to search for talent, sent to the same tools that you would have inside an applicant tracking system. And as you can see here, it works very similar. You're searching for a specific job title, for specific skills, and then there's a match score that's driving people to the top or pushing them down to the bottom. Now tell me this, Rigney, on this critical screen, which by the way, recruiters pay $10,000 per year per seat to access, do you see anywhere the recruiters can filter for endorsements? No. No, so they filter for skill, they filter for education, all the other things, but not endorsements. Now okay. as a savvy scientist, why do you think that might be? There's something to do with data quality. What do you think is the issue? It might just get filtered out with all of the endorsements people would give each other. Yeah. And so basically, if you think about how endorsements have really been pushed on LinkedIn, where it's constantly begging you, Rigney endorse Jeremy, Jeremy endorse Rigney, all of a sudden you're wait, you're thinking to yourself, can I really trust these things? And I'll give you an example. My own mother, of all people, has endorsed me for everything from astronomy to zoology. Two things I know nothing about. And this same mom problem has plagued LinkedIn's own data scientists where they just don't know which endorsements are legit. Therefore, recruiters who can't afford to bring in someone who got a joke endorsement, they need something a little more substantial. And that's why recruiters had to focus less on endorsements, more on recommendations. Mm. Think about the fallibility of your resume. Yeah, it's great. It's all about these skills and experiences but it's all through your own eyes, not exactly an unbiased source on your own life. On the other hand, a recommendation is like digital gold because it's this third party validation from someone that we can identify and we can decide whether they're trustworthy. So for everyone out there who's been playing the endorsement game, don't worry about it, it's not important, but please do get at least one recommendation from a professor, from a boss, someone who can speak to the fact that you have been awesome on the bench and you're going to be awesome in the industry or wherever you want to go next. That's what matters. Amazing question, Rigney. Thank you for asking that. Thank you. Great. Okay. If there are other questions about profiles, you can ask them at any point. Again, the chat, asking live, whatever's more convenient for you is awesome for me. So I'll keep looking for those. For now, I've got another question. Well, I think uh, 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 Chitrita, you've got a question. Uh, yes. So uh, even for the recommendations, your, your friends in the same industry can give you recommendations. Yeah, and so remember what LinkedIn always does, because LinkedIn is, is savvy to that. The one thing it will always say is, what was your relationship? So if it says, so-and-so mm -hmm. -so worked with you, that counts for something. Okay. But if it says that they were your client or your boss, in other words, they had some power dynamic advantage over you, now it comes off as more objective because there's, you don't have leverage over them the same way you have leverage over your friends and family. Okay, Chitriti? Yeah. Great question, love that one. Okay, time for your next question. And now we're gonna get into what really matters in terms of getting hired. So imagine that you have three different ways to apply for jobs. You can apply directly on a company's website. You can come to a job board aggregator like LinkedIn or Indeed, or you can get referred by someone on the inside. Between those three channels, which one gets you 10x more likely to be interviewed and hired? And I'm seeing a lot of C's here from Alicia, Ying Shin, Rafaela, Antara. 
Ying Shen, you were the first person to say C. What was behind your intuition? Why did you choose referrals, Ying Shen? Yeah, I just, I, I sent a lot of uh, applications through the company website and the LinkedIn and couldn't get a lot of responses. And I, I feel like if I talk to uh, some friends or friend of a friend for some referrals, maybe it will be better. Yeah, you nailed it, Ying Shen. And your experience matches the experience of millions of job seekers around the world. Because look at this data from one of the largest applicant tracking systems. What it's telling you is that a full 75% of all job applicants basically only apply through career sites or job boards. In other words, they're applying online. And while there's normally this idea of safety in numbers, the exact opposite is true here. Because by applying the same way that everyone is applying, you become a commodity. You don't stand out and differentiate. And as a result, the number of people hired through these channels is much smaller. On the other hand, only one in 10 candidates or so are, high, are applying via referral, and yet they are taking up the plurality of the one thing that we all want, which is they're getting hired. So to understand how to play this referral game and play it really well, I would love to show you what's happening inside the ATS and then give you a live demo. So again, imagine me as the recruiter. Here I sit at an amazing organization and I have hundreds of applications for my job. Yes, I could focus on match score, but what if there was something I trusted even more? And in that case, it's trusting the source of this application. If you are applying online, you are a total stranger. If you're being referred by one of my colleagues, I innately trust that person more than the stranger's opinion. And so bottom line is, I don't want you to be that sort of generic job searcher who applies as one of a thousand and gets corresponding results. Instead, I want you to be that job hacker who finds your way in the side entrance and actually gets the job. And to show you how it's done and to give away another free profile review after the session, just be the first person to raise your hand now. You can raise your hand. You can chat in, I'm in, Jeremy. Whomever is first gets the next benefit and the next demo. So who's going to be our next volunteer? Oh, I love that, Wendy. Wendy didn't just say, I'm in. She said, I'm in, exclamation mark. Yes, Wendy. All right, Wendy, feel free to unmute. Feel free to turn on your webcam. Let's do this. Welcome, Wendy. Hi, Jeremy. Hi, how are you, Wendy? I'm good. How are you? Doing great. Now, Wendy, you are so brave to volunteer. Yeah. I want you to throw down the gauntlet for me. Tell me the name of a job or a company you'd be really excited about, and I'll help you break in. Um, actually, I'm also thinking about clinical science sort of jobs. So I think those like clinical research uh, associate or like clinical trial manager is also those jobs also uh, applicable to me. Oh, I love that. Yeah. And is there, a, is there a certain company or organization you really love? Uh, I guess Givia is one of my Ooh. interesting companies. Too. Yeah, I love that. <laughs> so um, it's very close to my home. Right? So oh, That's awesome. <laughs> I live in Foster City. So I, I was going to say, yeah. Right. yeah. My, my neighbor here in Mountain View works at Gilead, and he's always complaining about driving all the way down there. So you have a much better commute than he does. Yes, yes. Um, <laughs> but in any case, let's get you a, a job at Gilead. And we're going to do it through the power of a referral. So I have a question for you, Wendy. Do you already know some people who work at Gilead? Yes. Okay. In that case, I think it probably makes the most sense to go directly to your friends, directly to your contacts inside, and just say, hey, here's my resume. Here's the job that I want. Would you mind referring me? But I want to make this a little more interesting. Let's imagine that you didn't have any connections already. If you don't know anyone at Gilead, Wendy, can you still get a referral? Uh, I think so because we I can just go into like Gilead and find like I think there's some options of like network searching like people who come from for example come from Genetech or come from uh, this I, school yeah the alumni kind of things and try to reach out to them connect with them and then see if they are open to talk to me and then refer me for the position that I'm interested in in Gilead. Absolutely. So let's show everyone yeah. how it's done. And I love that attitude. Where there's a will, there is always a way. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to come over to LinkedIn, and we're going to start by searching for the specific organization that we want to break into. Now, Wendy's focused on Gilead, but I want everyone to do this on your own screens right now for whatever company you're excited about. 
So I come over to the Gilead page. And then once I come to this page, you're going to see this little link that says how many people work there. If you click this link, you now have a company directory for Gilead that is more detailed, more nuanced than the one that sits on their own servers. That's how powerful LinkedIn is. Now, Wendy, I loved your intuition. You said, it's not enough to just know who works there. I have to find people on the inside who have something in common with me. So what yeah. do you want to filter for here, Wendy? Uh, maybe like people that have worked in Genetech before. Uh -huh. so like, check this said, out. like colleague, past company, and yeah. school. So you could say past company is Genetech, company. Yeah. or you could say past company is Gladstone. Gladstone. And this is, this is a, a Boolean or search. So it's saying you either worked here or you worked there. We click show results. And look at this. You have almost a thousand people who have something in common with you. Now let's get more specific. You said, Wendy, that you're interested in clinical research or clinical trial management. So let's do this. Let's do another Boolean search. We'll say clinical, and then we'll say research or trial. And then we're going to narrow this down even more to the people doing the exact job that you want. So here's Ian. Ian is a senior clinical trial manager at the company you want to join. Let's see what you have in common with him. So he also used to work at Genentech just a couple of years ago. Yeah. When you when you reach out to Ian, how do you want to do this, Wendy? Do you want to click connect? Do you want to send him a message? What do you think is the best way to catch Ian's attention? I think send a connect and then like connect has a notes option. And then yeah. add a note and that kind of briefly introduce myself saying that, hey, I'm Wendy and I'm currently working as a postdoc in Genetech and I'm interested in uh, applying clinical trial job in Gilead, but I would like to learn more insight from you in this job position. Yeah, sort of I things. love it. You are yeah. so on the money here, Wendy. Now, I will tell <laughs> you, this approach is amazing but it still only gives you about a 30% chance of getting through in my experience. And the reason for that is that we don't know how Ian feels about Genentech. We don't know mm -hmm. if he still sees you as a stranger or if he wants to talk to you. So I'm gonna show you something even more powerful. There is Ooh. something on this screen right now, Wendy, that will guarantee you a 100% chance of getting in oh, touch wow. with Ian. Wow. What do you think that might be? And if anyone um, knows, put it in the chat. Help Wendy out. Hey, mute. Aha, look what Alicia said. This Thanks is why come. LinkedIn is so powerful. And Savannah said it as well. LinkedIn doesn't just know who works at the company or who you know. It has all the invisible, invisible connections illuminated. And so, because we know Rita and Julia in common, I might go to Rita and say, Rita, would you mind introducing me to Ian over at Gilead? And now imagine what happens next, Wendy. Rita goes to Ian and says, Ian, you've got to chat with Wendy. She's about to leave Genentech, and she is an absolute rock star. If she goes to work at Pfizer or somewhere else, you're going to regret it forever. Ian says, okay, okay. I'll do you a favor, Rita. I'll talk to Wendy. And now you have a guaranteed chat with an insider in the company. So next question, Wendy. When you have a chat with Ian, whether it's on Zoom or over coffee, how can you build a relationship with him? Do you want to just ask for a referral right away, or is there a better no. approach? I think there's a better approach. And what's that? But um, I'm actually not quite sure about it, but I think maybe like more of coming from the understanding the inside of the, his job to start with. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, and then briefly into like talk about myself, like why I'm interested in this kind of job, and then also ask him like how I can build up my profile or resume to be more like applicable to the this job function. Oh, I love that, Wendy. Uh, I'll just say if anyone out there is like Wendy, you are so outgoing and so amazing. I could never do that. Just know that ChatGPT is here to help. You could say, generate 10 questions yeah. <laughs> um, if his role is a good fit for me. And you could just paste in his profile. 
And then you'll get some nice questions for Ian to help you understand his job. And here's the double benefit. Whoa. Not only are these questions going to help you learn about his role and about Gilead, mm -hmm. they're also going to help you build a really good connection with him interpersonally. Because here's the thing. If Ian is being asked all these questions and he is so excited to share his answers, to pay it forward to the next generation, all of a sudden he's like, Wendy asks good questions. She's curious. She's brave. She's passionate. In other words, she's the perfect fit for Gilead. So now you're building a really deep relationship. Now, Wendy, at some point, you want to pivot the conversation from just learning about Ian to getting that referral. How do you think you can make that pivot? How can you switch the conversation to where you want to head? Mm, good point. I don't know, to be honest. Yeah, this ask is the hardest part. Ask this is the hardest part. <laughs> yeah, ask ChatGPT. And ChatGPT probably has a good answer, to be honest. Here's what I like to say. I always like to put it into sort of an empathetic framework. I say, Ian, this has been awesome. Thank you for sharing your expertise. One last question before you go. If you were back in my shoes, back as a postdoc, trying to launch your first career in industry, what would you be doing to get an interview at Gilead? And when you put that kind of framing on it, where he's, where he's sort of imagining what it feels like to be a student or a grad student again, Ian's going to say two things. He's either going to say, hey, I'd be happy to refer you. Everyone here has gotten referred, including myself. Mm -hmm. Send me your CV. I'll refer you, Wendy. In which case, you're golden. Or he yeah. might say, hey, talk to Sheila. Talk to Rachel. Learn a little bit more about the company. Come here. Yeah. And then once you do that, once you build those relationships, get to know people on the inside, you've kind of earned Ian's trust. You've proven that you're reliable. So Wendy, if you see a job on the Gilead website and you want that job so badly, but you know that if you apply online, you're not going to be able to get in. Yeah. What can you do to get that referral, Wendy? What can you say to Ian that will have him put your name down in their system? Um, what would I be saying to Ian? If anyone knows, share it with Wendy. What's the yeah, magic word? Know. Okay, the magic word is just to I ask. Think... Because so well, often in my experience, when I students... Think if they they before, Wendy. Ref... Yeah, if they refer me and I get hired in, they will also get bonus, right? Ah, uh -huh, yes, yes, Wendy. <laughs> <laughs> Wendy, I could tell you are a rock star because Wendy gets it. Wendy says, hey, when I ask for a referral from Ian, I say, hey, Ian, it's been great getting to know you. I would be so honored if you could refer me for this role. Here's my resume. Here's the job description. But if not, no worries. Even though it's a no pressure request, there is a massive incentive for Ian to say yes. One yeah. incentive is extrinsic. He gets paid $1,000 or $5,000. Depending on Gilead's referral bonus structure. But what is the intrinsic motivation, Wendy? Why does Ian just want to help you no matter what? He wants some good person, good colleague to work with in his yeah. team as well. He wants great colleagues. And he, most importantly, he wants this thing called generativity, which is as you get further along in your career, it's not just about your own success, but as Shalini mm -hmm. said, it's about feeling like an awesome human being, someone who's a connector, someone who helps out their teammates, helps out the next generation, and leaves an awesome legacy behind. And so the bottom line is, whether people are motivated by money or karma or generativity, there are so many incentives for Ian to say yes, but you've got to ask. And thank you yeah. for being such an amazing volunteer, Wendy, because you, you were Jeremy. absolutely awesome. I'm so impressed by you. Thank you so much. <laughs> Okay, everyone, you got to give it up for Wendy because I know Wendy is probably an amazing biologist and uh, bench researcher, but she's also just an amazing person because she understands what we all want out of life, which is that sense of connectivity, that sense of relationship. Thank you for sharing that, Wendy. Okay, Thank and I'll share with you, Wendy, having... how to get that profile review afterwards. So stay tuned for that. Thank okay. you so much. If anyone's got questions about referrals, networking, finding people on the inside, please let me know. And then as you ask some questions or think about this, I want to ask you the next question, which is, how do you get all the way through to the promised land? So we've talked a lot about this idea of the recruiter is so important. They're the ones who are reviewing applications. The referrer is important. 
because they're the ones who's giving you that sort of um, inside edge into the job. But if you had to give out a MVP award, most valuable player for one person in the hiring process, who would you give it to? The recruiter, the hiring manager, aka your future boss, or C, the person who refers you? So A, B, or C, who do you think is most critical in this entire drama that is the hiring process? I'm seeing a lot of Bs here. Wendy's saying B. Harapriya is saying B. Rigney's saying B. Harapriya, you said B. What was behind your selection? Priya, feel free to unmute if you can. Just give us a few words about why you chose B. Okay, Harapriya might be in the library or somewhere where they're not able to get uh, unmuting access. No worries. I'll just tell you flat out, it all comes back to incentives. And so we were just talking about the incentives for any human to want to help out another. But what about your incentives based on your job and what you're focused on? Well, let's face this. The recruiter, even though they're the face of the company, is primarily focused with just getting those jobs out there, getting a ton of candidates, screening them a little bit. But at the end of the day, the hiring manager is the final decision maker. And why is that? Well, because unlike the recruiter, who's trying to fill 25 jobs, a hiring manager often is just trying to fill one job. And their choice of the candidate for that job could make or break their own success over the next several years. As an example, as a hiring manager myself, if I hire someone awesome, my life is so much easier. Less work for me, I look good in front of my boss, maybe I can finally take a vacation. Whereas if I hire the wrong person, now everything starts to fall apart. I'm putting that person on a probation plan, I'm laying them off, I'm rehiring, I'm retraining. That is a pain in the butt, frankly. So hiring managers need awesome talent the most. And as a result, what I want you to understand is that these applicant tracking systems are not just for recruiters, they're also for the big bosses. Because as a hiring manager, I will often come into our ATS at Khan Academy and handpick the people that I'm most excited about because I have all the skin in the game. So bottom line, don't just be that job searcher who focuses only on recruiters, be that job hacker who finds the big boss. And to show you how it's done, I'm going to actually do this demo myself really quickly, just in the interest of time. But check this out. A lot of you might be thinking, hey, Jeremy, I know the hiring manager matters, but how do we find them? The recruiter is so obvious, but the hiring manager is behind the scenes. Well, check this out. These two magic words now give you access to hiring managers around the world just by searching for people who say, I'm hiring. Look at this. The people who are posting on LinkedIn are not recruiters, they're not headhunters, they're CEOs, they're the head of the sales team, VPs of marketing, VPs of product, head of product marketing. These are future bosses and they are saying, I'm not content to sit on the sidelines and wait for talent to come to me, I'm gonna go out there and find talent myself. So what does that mean for you? Well, if you search for I'm hiring and then maybe you search for research or uh, clinical sciences or whatever it might be, what you want to do is you want to find that person and you want to reach out to them to understand exactly what they need. So let's say that Alan has a job description and he says, I'm hiring for a researcher with this background. If you can reach out to Alan and say, Alan, I know that you need someone who's really good with database management, really good with trial management, really good with reporting. Those are the things that I can do really, really well. And here's what I can do for you. Now you are focused on the needs and pains of the exact person who has the authority to hire you, aka your future boss, as opposed to just reaching out and saying, hey, Alan, I want to chat. I want to waste your time. Now you want to give him a painkiller that says, I know you've got um, so much to get done. I know you don't have enough talent. Let me be that Tylenol. Let me be that Advil that solves your specific talent pain. And that's the way to find the people behind the scenes who can change the course of your career, maybe even your life. So check that out. Let's take some questions. Okay, we've got a question from Gloria. When applying to a job, there's an option to apply via LinkedIn or directly through the company's website. Is there a pro or con for either? So Gloria, it turns out that applying via LinkedIn or applying via the company's website makes largely no difference. However, what does make a difference is when you apply for jobs. 
So let me show um, you some interesting stats here. There was a really great study done by a company called TalentWorks where they track the outcomes of applications for jobs over the course of when people apply. If you applied right away, if you applied seven days later, 14 days later, and look what they discovered. There is a massive advantage to applying in the first 96 hours or so, because after that, there is almost exponential decay in terms of your chance of getting an interview rate. Now, why is that? Well, it all comes back to recruiter incentives. If I'm a recruiter and I have 25 jobs to fill, as soon as a new job posting goes up and I get those resumes, I pounce on it. I immediately review the resumes, I get back to those candidates, and we're off to the races. But a week later or two weeks later, I'm now on to the next job and the next job, and I'm already starting to think less and less about this original posting. So bottom line is, don't worry about the specific channel. Make sure that you apply early. And the way, of course, that you do that is you set job alerts. So you come into a tool like LinkedIn, and when you search for jobs, you make sure that you don't just search for the jobs once, but you set these alerts and you apply as soon as the jobs are listed. And in addition to applying online as fast as possible, you immediately start reaching out to people on the inside to see if you can find some people to refer you. That way you get the best of both worlds, the best application timing, and the best way to get that referral that 10 X is your results. Great question. Okay, I think that does it for now. I'm gonna to go to one last question for you before we close up for the day. This is a fun one. Imagine now that the tables are turned. You are no longer the job seeker, you are the hiring manager. And you are hiring a member of the Simpsons cast to join your team. And you've just interviewed Homer, his daughter Lisa, and his boss, Mr. Burns. Between those three candidates, who do you prefer to join your own organization? Is it A, is it B, or is it C? One last pop quiz, and I'm curious to see what everyone says. And I've got to tell you, this is so fascinating. Because Deepankar is saying B, and Joel is saying B, and Gloria is saying B, and that's what everyone says around the world. And it all comes back to this initial finding by a group of sociologists at Harvard, which is cross-culturally and cross-geographically, we as humans have our own algorithm for hiring. And it usually boils down to two things. Number one is competence. Do you know what you're talking about? Can you do the job? But also warmth. Would I want to do the job with you? Would you be a good teammate? And the reason I bring this up is that so often when we're coming out of grad school or we're coming out of a postdoc program, we tend to only prioritize competence in our interview prep. But the reality is, it's not just what you say, it's how you say it. And so what I wanna show you is one last tool before we close up that will help you ace both of these things. And this tool is hiding out right inside LinkedIn under the job section. Check this out. If you come to jobs and then you come to interview prep, you will see an interview simulator that gives you the best of both worlds. Tells you how competent you are, but also how warm, how engaging. And you can see all sorts of common questions here, as well as questions for specific kinds of roles. And if you know they're gonna ask you about your greatest weakness, you've gotta get ready. So you do the same thing that professional athletes do. You record yourself practicing. Now I know what you're thinking. You're like, Jeremy, are you kidding me? I don't want to see myself doing an interview. This is too painful. But tell me which is more painful, discovering that you are not necessarily coming across the way you want now or discovering that after you interview for your dream job. I know what I would prefer. I would want to get ready ahead of time and be ready to crush that prime time opportunity. So that's the first thing. Understand how you're coming across. And then number two, get specific feedback on how you can control that perception. And there are a couple of specific things that really matter. One of them is pacing. So often, if you speak too fast or too slow, that immediately leads to a poor perception. If you speak in a monotone fashion, you are uh, sort of written off as low energy, not really engaging. And if you rely upon filler words like um or a, they detract from your communication, make it harder to see you as credible, harder to see you as warm. And so bottom line, if you take all that feedback and then also share your answers with Alicia and maybe even Gladstone alumni inside the organization you want to join, you can make sure that you are absolutely ready for prime time in all the ways that matter. And here's the best part. This tool is totally free 
and available right now. So there's the link in the chat. You don't need LinkedIn Premium. You don't need anything else. Just take advantage of this tool the next time you have a big interview coming up. Now, we're down to our final five minutes. So like Alicia mentioned, I would love, love, love your feedback right there in that SurveyMonkey link. As I always said as a teacher, feedback is a gift. And I would love to learn from you and your feedback. So please share that there. I would also love to learn from your questions. So if you've got any last questions like Ratna, put those in the chat or raise your hand. And then finally, I have some bonus goodies that I'm about to share with you. So stay in the line a few more minutes. Okay, let's take a question from Ratna. Ratna says, what does it mean when a job posting is reposted on LinkedIn? Does the same 96 hour timeline apply to this as well? Great question, Ratna. So if you see that a job is reposted on LinkedIn, chances are there is an automatic system behind the scenes that is reposting it every few weeks. Why is it doing that? Because recruiters know that jobs that are posted more recently show up higher in the job listings. And so the recruiter wants to make sure that they get maximum visibility. But it does not change that 96 hour timeline. So the bottom line is, you don't wanna focus on reheated jobs or old jobs. You wanna focus on jobs as they come out. And that's why those job alerts are so critical because they get you into that critical window where you maximize your opportunity. Okay, let's now talk about, um, oh, actually, Alicia has a question. Separate from another participant. Is there any tool for job searchers slash job hackers that can help them avoid bad recruiters? Oh my goodness, I love this question. Okay, check this out. One of the advantages that LinkedIn has over other job tools is that it has the full stack, as we say. It knows what's happening with candidates. It knows what's happening with recruiters. It knows what's happening with companies. Look what LinkedIn can do as a result. I search over here for a specific role. And then as I scroll down, we're gonna start to see that certain jobs are gonna say, um, there's something going on behind the scenes. And if we discover that little signal, what that tells us is that there is actually a human recruiter behind the scenes who is looking for that specific thing right now. So it's not a fake listing, it's not a bogus listing, it is a real opportunity and it's one that you can go for. So let me see if I can pull up an example of that real quick. I'm gonna search for product manager. And let's see here. Um, I think all these ones are promoted, so those are probably not good examples, but I will find one after the fact and share it with you so you can see exactly where there's real opportunity and avoid those bogus recruiters. Great, great question, I love that. Okay, time for the bonus goodies. And now, what I wanna share with you are a couple of things. Number one, I would love to connect with everyone who volunteered today. If you were selected as a volunteer, be sure to send me a message so I can do a bonus profile review for you after the session. And even if you were not selected for a volunteer opportunity, still connect with me because it's great practice. The only catch is that you must personalize your connection request because I want you to get in the habit of always personalizing. It just leads to a higher acceptance rate and more connections. That's step number one. Step number two is, if you wanna get that book that I was alluding to before, all you've got to do is come over to this link and I've got this great Amazon hack for you, which is if you start a free trial of Kindle Unlimited or Audible, you can download the book, cancel the trial and keep it forever, courtesy of me. And I like to think Jeff Bezos as well. So that's a free way to get the book. And then one last bonus thing. Back when I was in grad school, back in the digital stone ages, I was an intern at Apple during the summer of 2011. And it turned out, that was Steve Jobs' final summer at Apple and his final keynote at the big Apple Developers Conference in San Francisco. I'll never forget that even though he was already very sick at that time, he still pulled out all the stops, including one final slide, one more thing. And on that morning in July of 2011, Steve introduced the world to Siri for the very first time. Now I know that Siri is not looking exactly hot by comparison with ChatGPT these days, but you have to remember that at the time, it was a sensation. The idea that you could talk to your computer and it would talk back to you was just mind blowing. So I believe there's a direct line between the world that Steve ushered in that morning and the world we live in right now. And in honor of Steve, in honor of Siri, I've got one more thing for you and I call it CareerBot 3000. The idea here 
is to give you access to everything we talked about, not just any old job, but a career and a life that gives you what you love. And it always starts with priorities. You say, I want a job that gives me uh, closer access to patients. Maybe that's important to you. I want a job that lets me make an impact in people's lives. So you start with that. And then maybe you say, I want to stay in the Bay Area because you've fallen in love with San Francisco and this city. Whatever your values are, you start with those things. You put in your resume, you put in your profile. And what this tool will do is it'll start to think through that whole ocean of opportunities based on what you've done, what you want to do, and it will give you access to specific roles that help you get there. And for each of these roles, it'll let you drill down to the things that matter. We talked at the very beginning about the primacy of keywords, how applicant tracking systems and the LinkedIn algorithm use them to determine who goes to the top of the list. Here are your most important keywords. We talked about learning about these roles and then customizing your resume or your LinkedIn profile to really hit on the things that recruiters are hungry for. We'll give you that advice. And we talked about warmth and competence, really making sure that you come across the right way in all the ways that we humans crave. And so to give you access to this tool, you come right over here to the link in the chat and you have free lifetime access because I want you to go out there and live the life that Steve Jobs envisioned for all of us where we all can make a huge dent in the universe. So with that being said, I want to thank Alicia for hosting, our amazing volunteers for sharing so much of their expertise, and to every grad student, every postdoc across Gladstone, here is wishing you a life and a career that you love and allows you to share that love with others. Thank you all so much, and here's wishing you fantastic success ahead. Thank you again. Thank you so much, Jeremy. We'll be in touch also after the fact. Loved having you with us for all of our folks at Gladstone and Genentech and UCSF. Thank you all. Bye, everyone. everyone.